Studio Files. I'm here in Franklin, Ohio at Babblefish Recording Studio with Steve Paliero. Steve, thanks for letting us come to the studio. Hey, no problem. No. been in operation when you guys get started? We opened up in 1997 and it came from uh, a um, home studio just like a lot of studios do. So. What type of uh, projects do you guys do here? We get a lot of everything uh, from bluegrass and bluegrass and gospel bluegrass to rock to screamo to jazz. Uh, did some classical flute stuff uh, just the other day on location. So I mean we, we really cover the gamut. What type of equipment could we expect to see? We try to bridge the gap between old school and new school. But as far as gear goes, I'd love to give you a tour. Cool. Well, let's take a look. Okay. This is a uh, MCI JH24. It is uh, a two-inch analog machine uh, from uh, circa 1970. I th actually, I think it's an 82, um, right before so Sony bought them out. So it is an MCI. It's a great machine that has that analog sound. Uh, people, we still use it, use it a lot for drums, tracking drums. Uh, take the drums, record them here. Drums, bass, guitar, you know, basic tracks, and we'll dump them over to the computer. From there over to the hard disk and do all of our editing there. Over here, we have a small rack. This contains our headphone system here. This is the Hear Technology Hearback system, which is really cool. If you look at that, we've got all the channels here that are available from the patch bay, so everybody has their own mix out in the studio. Below that, we've got the 2408, and we have the 24IO Motu interface, and that is what gets us from the console into this, back into the computer. I didn't want to have to do headphone mixes from the computer. I wanted the computer to basically be our tape machine. So it was very important that we had 24 ins and 24 outs. So everything that we did, we could operate just like we did prior to having that. So basically, it's an analog feel to the whole studio still. For that, we just have a CD burner and then the DA38s, which is actually where we started the studio, 8-track digital modular units. We still use them basically to take people's old work and transfer it out. Here we have um, a Joe Meek uh, VC1Q. It's just channel strip, basically, you've got, uh, or you're going to put gain, then you have a compressor, uh, EQ, and de-esser, and uh, syllabus booster, however you want to oh. treat that. It's kind of a cool little unit. Below that, we have a, an Effectron, or a Delta Lab Effectron 1. It's an ADM 1020. It's an old delay line from the 70s. Things sound great. It works great for a pre-delay for my plate reverb, which we don't have in the room oh, okay. here, but we have a plate, and it's up, actually upstairs. Then below that, we have the old uh, 200, Lexicon 200 reverb, and that thing is just sweet. I, there's just nothing other than maybe a Lexicon 300 or a, you know, the 480 or something like that that has those sounds. But the tails on that, it's, you put it on a plate and it's almost equivalent to the real plate. I mean, it, it, they just sound absolutely amazing. The Behringer V-Amp, which is basically an amp simulator. It works great to sit down and say, okay, we're just going to plug in a guitar and figure out a guitar part. Then over to the compressor bank, uh, Personas ACP8, eight channels of compression and gates. Really nice when you're working from the console. The DBX 165A, it's, it's just a fantastic unit. Kick drum, bass guitars, vocals, I mean, it just sounds great. The Pandora LM402 is kind of a freakish thing. I've never seen another one, but to, you know, to do the two-stage compression, something like that, to chain the two together, it works really, really nice. Below that are the Altec 436s, uh, tube compressors, just great units, um, tons of character. If you don't want, if you don't want to hear them, don't put it on there. And your board? The board. The board is a Tascam M600. Basically, it's 32 channels by 16 by 32. It is a um, bus console or a, a split console, if you will, as opposed to an inline. 
whereas you have the input section here, the output section here, and then this is your return. And it really, there's, there's pretty much nothing you cannot do with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just yeah, great. And pa patch bay is completely comprehensive. Uh, so if there's any patches that you need to make on there, it can be done. Okay. Monitoring, we are going through the um, uh, TOC um, Studio Monitor 1s. We've got the Bryson uh, 4B and the Hafler 1500 on the top. Down here we have the Yamaha NS10s and the M-Audio um, powered speakers. Cool. And as far as the computer goes, we are using Cubase uh, SX2 and uh, have a pretty comprehensive list of plugins, a wave um, bundle and uh, the UAD, uh, I think it's a studio pack. So we've got the Fairchild and um, the what, 1176s and that kind of stuff. So.